everybody. I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now a lot of times we come to scripture and say, wait a minute, it shouldn't be unbelievable. It should be believable. Well, that is true. But how many times have you heard things in scripture and you, you know that they're true and it just, we still have a hard time really. Where, where we just say it's unbelievable. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't actually believe it. I mean, you think about that God spoke light into existence. That's It's unbelievable. You have to believe it by faith because our minds cannot comprehend it. So today, as we're looking at Psalm 87, and, and very short Psalm, but it, you see a focus on the city of Zion, right? That Jerusalem, that place where God decided to dwell. And there in the temple and the way that he would work and the way that he would show up and the, the things that he had for the priests to do and all of this that was set up so that he could dwell amongst his people. But even that, it's, it's as you read the psalm and you read through scripture, you see that it's still pointing to a day when the Lord is going to set up his millennial reign, his uh, thousand year kingdom and reign here on earth with the capital being there at Jerusalem. And then even furthermore, to know that there's one day going to be a new Jerusalem uh, when there's a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem that we'll all celebrate in forever, for all eternity. But even with that, with this picture here of Zion here on earth, there Mount Zion, as a lot of the false gods, they thought that their gods uh, dwelled in, uh, dwelt in mountains and you take like Elijah and the prophets of Baal there on Mount Carmel. You know, that's particularly where they thought he was. And, and, and you go to many other gods in the region that that's what they thought. But here's where the God of all creation chose to dwell amongst his people, chose to dwell here at Zion. And that does just seem unbelievable. But look what the psalmist says about it today. Psalm 87, looking at the first three verses, he says, his foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Selah. O a city of God. And one day we'll be in that celestial city with him for all eternity. But can you imagine what it meant to the psalmist to know that the glory of God would dwell there in the temple? Today we have the Holy Spirit, and I don't think that we even begin to think about the privilege that we have because I think we, I mean, honestly, I think we take for granted that we always have God with us. But could you imagine having to wait to go to the temple to have access through somebody else, right? To Because we couldn't even approach ourselves and you had to have the high priest who would go in once a year uh, to atone for the sins of the people. And, and all of this was never going to match up. It was never really going to be enough. Until Jesus came and was the perfect sacrifice and the veil was torn and, and no longer was there a separation, but that the, everything was paid uh, by Jesus Christ's blood. And, and because of that, we have access to, to God, to God, the father through Jesus Christ, the son. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. But yet I think sometimes. We we think more about Zion. Right. We think more about even maybe ahead. We think about the distant place in the future. But do you realize that you have the presence of God now? It, it's I know it'll be one thing there that we'll, then we'll be able to see face to face. But look, that's yes, that's walking by sight. And oh, what a day that will be. But now we have the opportunity to walk by faith. Think about that. You remember when when Jesus after he had been resurrected and he appeared to the disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. And old Thomas, the doubting one, right? And then the next week he comes back and Thomas is there. And, and then he, you know, he had said, well, until I put my, uh, my hands uh, into the wounds, you know, uh, until I really can see him and touch him and handle him, I'm not going to believe. And, and so he does see him and he does believe. And, and Jesus says, well, you're blessed for believing. But even basically, even more blessed are those who believe and haven't seen. See, I think sometimes we almost, I hope you understand what I'm saying here. It's not that we shouldn't look forward to heaven. It's, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to being able to see my Savior face to face and, and to see God. 
to be there for all eternity with no more sin, no more uh, temptation, no more sickness, no more wars, no more death, all these things that go along with it. And yes, I'm looking forward to that. But I don't have to look forward. I don't have to look forward. Listen to what I'm saying. I hope you understand. I don't have to look forward to the presence of God then because I can experience the presence of God now. Now. Think about that. You have, If you're a born-again believer, you have the indwelling Holy Spirit of God in you, with you at all times. You don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through anybody else. You can go straight to the throne room of heaven because of Jesus Christ and because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. You can do that now. So yes, we look forward to the day we can walk by sight, but enjoy and celebrate and relish in the fact that now because you were chosen by God, you have the opportunity and the privilege to walk by faith. And that is simply unbelievable. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.